Hello, beautiful souls. This is Jamie Goldstein, intuitive astrologer, and I want to offer an intuitive flow on this Capricorn solstice we have on December 21st, the Capricorn new moon on December 23rd, the Capricorn new Venus portal or Venus moon gate on December 24th. And this is the first Venus moon conjunction where Venus is visible as evening star. So we're rising up in this new evening star energy. And if you keep on hearing me say new, it's like we're in this powerful energy of reset and rebirthing with this Capricorn solstice. And then we're going to move into all of this new energy flowing in here. And I'm filming this right in this Capricorn solstice portal, which is December 21st at 1.48 p.m. I'm going to try to get this video filmed here and then so I can have my own um, uh, ceremony here when we are in the exact moment of the solstice, I'm hoping. Hopefully I can get this here in one go. Um, and this is a really powerful time that we are alive um, when the solstices are aligned to the galactic cross, the Capricorn solstice is when the sun is very close to the galactic center and the uh, Cancer solstice is very close to when the sun is aligned to the anti-galactic center. And this is um, a really powerful time in the 26,000 year galactic year, right? The procession of the equinoxes and these things move very, very slowly. So to be alive while this is happening is really special. And we are experiencing a um, collective, you know, a collective um, ascension, a collective um, yeah, collective ascension. That's just what's coming to me like never before in our history as we're, or at least through this 26,000 year galactic year. And um, Caitlin Costell is someone who speaks to how special it is for that we have these solstices on the galactic cross. She actually spoke to this on the Astro Priestess Roundtable that I just posted here last week. I record this once a month with beautiful and visionary astrologers, Caitlin Costell, Nura Rochelle and Mar Guerrero. And this is where I learned about having the uh, solstice is on the galactic cross. So Caitlin's an amazing source of wisdom on this. I'm going to link that video on the description there so you can go and hear directly from her. But this is a really special time in history. And I do believe that with the procession of the, you know, the, the procession of the equinox and solstice points, I do believe in the future, the uh, solstices uh, or the Capricorn solstice will align directly at the galactic center. If I'm not going the wrong direction as I'm like working things out, out in my head here, but it's really, really powerful. And we have the sun moving through the galactic center, which is right now at about 27 or uh, 26, 27 degrees of Sagittarius. And so that's happening the days before the solstice. And when any planet moves through the galactic center, this is a cosmic reset, right? A cosmic upgrade because the galactic center is the rotational center of the Milky Way galaxy. We believe it's a black hole or that's what's believed. I don't think we actually really know, but it appears to be, you know, pulling in all the light from around it, all the stars, and then it's an em emitting an immense amount of cosmic information, right? Light, light codes from the center of that galactic center. It's like this antenna that's coming from the center of our Milky Way galaxy. So as the sun goes through the galactic center, that was about December 17th to 19th, uh, you know, this past week, there's light codes within the sun rays that are that were streaming through from the sunlight and the sun is our energy right so the sun going through the galactic center this is a reset to our energy we're having this powerful uh, energetic upgrade cosmic upgrade and we may have not felt it yet because this was an intense sun going through the galactic center uh one because venus was in capricorn squaring chiron really stirring our hearts to really, I think, break open past some of that armoring that was still there around our hearts to keep us safe and protected from a previous wound, right? And, but now at this point in life, it's just keeping us separated from authentic connection and separated from receiving in for the flow of life, right? So it was like this, as the sun was going through the galactic center, it was like this really intense kind of heart stirring to open our hearts up, right, to greater love, to open our hearts up to more of the exquisiteness and the magnificence that we are, and to open up to more of the medicine that comes from 
really being connected to our hearts. And um, also, I think this uh, the sun moving through the galactic center right before the solstice was a really intense one because also we're coming out of the eclipse season still. I mean, we're not in the eclipse portal, but we're still rippling out of it. We had an eclipse season, you know, um, October, and November, where the sun was uh, moving, the sun was activating the south node. And so it was this really intense kind of karmic clearing of many past lifetimes of karma, this lifetime as well, um, the shame programming, fear, deep self-limiting beliefs, poor wounds. We've been clearing out where we were energetically entangled, you know, entrenched in a mesh with people, places, and things, and situations, and timelines that are not in alignment with where we are now. It's like we're just this intense kind of clearing. And then we had this also this, that intense uh, Taurus lunar eclipse with Uranus, which is just, again, it's this opening us up to higher timelines. I mean, it's, but it's all happening while we're having this really intense clearing. We've got to do out the clearing, you know, to really open up and we're opening up to all this new energy, but it's like, it was an intense purging. And I kind of feel like I know myself, I was in it. And I also, heard other people were really in it this weekend too. I think one, because Venus was square Chiron, but also it's like, I, I felt it like it was like this cosmic ringing out. Like we were just getting wrung out. Like all those things we were clearing out with eclipse season. And really this past year, we've been in this accelerated, um, uh, timeline shifting this last year. So also we've been in this accelerated clearing out of old karma and, and habits and patterns and dynamics and all these things. I mean, it's just been such an accelerated, such an accelerated rate, the transformation. Um, so it was like, you know, it's like those things. It's like, ah, oh, I, I cleared that out. I, it's like all those things we thought maybe we were clearing out. It's like this one last ringing out, getting those deep imprints or those deep hooks. And it's, it was an intense, it was an intense clearing, but at the same time we were receiving so many light codes to our etheric body, right? Our light body also, you know, activating our physical body as well, but our physical body is the most densest of energy. Uh, physical reality is the most densest of energy and it's the most slow moving. So while our light body, right? Etheric body was receiving so many upgrades, it's gonna take a little time for it to kind of integrate and ripple out into our physical bodies. And we don't need to do anything, right? Things are just happening just how they need to be. And that's a big theme for this Capricorn solstice, just trusting, not pushing energy, not forcing energy. Mars is still retrograde, this Capricorn solstice. And the Capricorn solstice, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, this is our winter solstice. We are at maximum darkness, right? So this thing's composting, coming up from our unconscious to compost and offer to Mother Earth as beautiful nourishment for the soil, right? So we're in this uh, composting, reset, release, stillness, pause, right? I'm feeling the energy to root into my body, root into the earth. And there's something really powerful about honoring, you know, these um, turning of the wheel moments, these powerful solar portals, like the solstices and the equinoxes and the cross quarters. And here in the Northern hemisphere, this is a time of pause, of quietness, of stillness, of going into the darkness, finding our light and we're being rebirthed from within, right? The sun is being rebirthed. And also, you know, I want to honor in the Southern hemisphere, you are in your summer solstice where you are at the moment of maximum light, right? The celebration of the light and um, the manifestation of the light. And then in the summer or in the Southern hemisphere, you know, then after this summer solstice, the light is going to start waning in light. And then in the northern hemisphere in our winter solstice we're at that day of maximum darkness and then we're about to start waxing in light right the light is being reborn here and um one of the things i really think with the solstice that we're learning to i think this is a theme of the solstice and this capricorn new moon we're we're healing our relationship with the capricorn energy and this is a theme that came up many times in that astro priestess roundtable that i posted on here uh, earlier this week or i guess last week i'll put a link here um that every sign has its essence right capricorn is the wisdom of the grandmothers the wisdom of the wise elders 
It's the earth wisdom, the wisdom of the ancestors, the wisdom of the trees, uh, the soil, the roots, right? And Capricorn is about living in alignment with nature's principles, living in right relationship with the earth. And Capricorn is a sign of responsibility, of devotion, of commitment. And the true essence of Capricorn is like living in right relationship with community, doing what is responsible for community and the next generations to come. So living in a way that's responsible and sustainable for the earth, community, and the next generations to come. And the way our you know current Western world under this kind of dominator culture that is falling away, but the way it's been, the Capricorn energy has been really distorted. You know, Capricorn is known as a sign of, you know, doing and productivity and like getting to the top and achievement and accomplishment. And, you know, that's kind of been the, the Capricorn kind of the, the distortion of the Capricorn energy that we've been conditioned into, you know, work hard, be productive all the time, do things, advance in the world, achievement, accomplishment, what can you show for yourself? That's not the essence of Capricorn and just, you know, doing and doing things and, and achieving things. Those are not bad, but this is about our relationship to it. We have a very distorted relationship to the Capricorn energy and with the dominator culture, it's gotten very far away from the original essence because the, at the heart of Capricorn is it's the magic of the earth, right? And it is living in right relationship with nature's principles, the earth and community and and living in a way that is supportive for the next generations to come, where we are taking into consideration all beings, especially our most vulnerable beings. So we're healing that energy. And one of the ways, you know, this distortion lives within almost all of us, right? And not everyone, but most all of us, you know, in our, our, our modern Western world is this addiction to doing right and being productive and i feel like we're really reorienting that energy with the solstice particularly because mars who is exalted in capricorn but mars is in gemini and retrograde so mars is the planet of action initiation mars is how we direct our solar life force energy out venus is how we direct our solar life force energy in and so mars that go-getter productive doing uh you know just directing our life force energy out mars is on pause right so that part of our energy has been on pause really since the end of october we've been reorienting how we exert our energy how we push our energy out and so mars has been in retrograde in gemini right so we're learning to rewrite the story of how we take conscious inspired action in the world and we've been drawing our and this is part of the solstice energy too it's been part of mars retrograde we've been drawing our energy in that we've been scattering and splintering out into all these different situations like all these timelines right mars is retrograde in gemini we've been drawing our energy back in rewriting our stories right that relationship with our mental our mental thinking right our mental energy and our action mars in gemini and because our our thought patterns were running very much influenced how we take action out into the world. So we're, we're healing those, we're rewriting those stories, we're drawing our energy back in. And then once Mars goes direct, which will be during this Capricorn season, January 12th, we can start to direct our energy in more conscious inspired ways and a more uh, in a more potent way, right? In alignment with higher timelines. We're also shifting into higher timelines. It's like we're drawing our energy back in. So then we can direct our solar life force energy out into higher timelines that we're most in alignment with while Mars goes direct here. But so Mars is on pause, right? Being in this retrograde still. So if you've been trying to take action and make forward movements, like you just can't get traction or you're just met with all these obstacles, it's because Mars has been in retrograde. And also Venus is in Capricorn at the time of this solstice and venus started her cycle in capricorn in january of 2022 where she met the sun in capricorn and rose as morning star and venus one of the things of venus in capricorn she's teaching us how to create our lives from a place of being venus is our being nature capricorn is the structure of our lives right the foundations and so we're learning how to create from a place of being and i think that's a big theme this solstice also venus uh made three uh, retrograded back and forth with Pluto as she started the cycle. And so we're also, we're, we're, we're healing where the dominator culture has been living within us. Where has this 
doing kind of pushing kind of energy um been living within us where we're letting whatever was whatever remnants of the dominator culture we were conditioned into that have been living within us dying off and then being reborn how to create from a place of being how to manifest from a place of being from our hearts we're learning how to create our lives in the world around us from our hearts on a new level and capricorn is a sign of integrity this is and venus is our values right living in integrity with our heart living in integrity with our values and really living in a way that is with an integrity from our hearts to live in a way in right relationship with the earth community and in a way that will positively benefit the next generations to come. And so Venus being in Capricorn again at this moment of the solstice, this is powerful energy of we're, we're healing this doing addiction, right? When we can just pause and be and just open up to the flow of life, it's it's, it's, this is like, we're learning to draw in, right? Receive the flow of life, receive these higher timelines. And then Mars, our action can just flow from our heart, right? Our magic is our being, our magic is our presence. Our medicine is our being, right? Our medicine is our presence. It's our heart medicine. So these are things we're learning to, uh, embrace more and embody. And, um, I'm just really, really sensing that it's like when we can really just pause and be and open up to the flow of life. Venus is how open are we to the flow of life? We can create a whole new foundations, whole new structures within our lives. And um, I feel like this is just such a big theme of the solstice and this new moon and Venus is square Chiron with the solstice, but it's separating. Venus is now at 14 degrees at the moment of the solstice. Chiron is still retrograde at 11 degrees Aries. So she squared Chiron while well, the sun was going through the galactic center and not that the square is separating it's dissipating so this tells me we are moving on right we're actually able to where I, I feel this energy it's like ah oh, we can actually finally move on and really create something from our heart now that we're like finally healing some of those maybe deeper heart wounds that have been coming up again and again maybe we've had armoring around our heart to keep us safe at one point but it's now just been disconnecting us from the flow of life it's like we're moving on we're opening up and we're creating more from our heart. And, um, you know, one of these themes is that with the solstice, you know, the sun is our energy. What is sustainable for our energy? It's like the old ways of over pushing, over exerting, overdoing. Like for me, they're, they're not sustainable. They're not even really an option anymore. Um, this is like, you know, we're, we're also healing a lot of the comparison, right? Looking at other people and seeing how other people are doing their lives and we need to keep up and we need to push ourselves so we can keep up. It's like, no, healing all of that and letting, letting things just be. How can we create our lives more from this place of being just open to the flow of life? And then any action can flow from that place, from a more aligned easeful place because a lot of us have these ideas that things have to be effortful things have to be hard more work more results and we're learning to heal a lot of that um and with the solstice one of the other big things is jupiter's or the sun at zero degrees of um capricorn is square jupiter at zero degrees of aries i can't even believe i'm just bringing this up now but i am um this is quite special because jupiter you know spends about a year in a sign, takes 12 years to go around the Zodiac. Jupiter already did go into Aries uh, in 2022 between May and then went retrograde and left Aries and went back into Pisces in October. And so Jupiter is the planet of expansion, right? Abundance. Jupiter expands us into new timelines. Jupiter is the wisdom seeker. Jupiter is that that, that, that drive within each of us to live with meaning and purpose and to seek the highest truth. So Jupiter at zero degrees of Aries, the day the sun is going to zero degrees of Capricorn and Jupiter moved into Aries the day before the solstice. Um, but that is still at zero degrees on the solstice. That is powerful. Zero is the degree of infinite possibility. We are really expanding into infinite possibility here. I mean, this is like, uh, I feel like we're going to have a little bit of a slower start to this new solar year because Mars is retrograde. Mercury is going to go retrograde December 29th. But once Mars goes direct and gets moving, like I think actually by the time we move into the, uh, the Aries equinox, right, in March, I feel like that's when it's like go time, you know, <laughs> like it's, we're going to have like everything direct at that point. So it might be a slower start, but we are expanding into new timelines. And this is about receiving them, right? Because 
Jupiter and Aries, this is like we've, uh, this is rippling from that Jupiter Neptune conjunction that we had in April of 2022, where Jupiter and Neptune met at 23 degrees of Pisces. That just opened up the floodgates to connect in with a higher vision, a higher dream, a higher inspiration that we can ground in, channel in, and ground in, and create in this physical reality, streaming in something from the imaginative, the etheric realm, this dreaming bigger, right? Imagining bigger, dreaming bigger. We have to imagine it. We have to dream it before we can create it in the physical. So we're connecting into new possibilities, things that are beyond what we thought we could create in this world, in this lifetime, right? It's like we're we're connecting in with those higher timelines. And then Jupiter and Aries is like, when it's like, let's go for it. It's like, I'm just moving for it. Full body, yes. Like Jupiter and Aries is like, I'm moving towards what lights every cell within my being up with inspiration, with passion, with meaning, with purpose. I'm just saying, yes, I'm just going for it. Like that's that energy. Aries is like, if it's not a full body, fuck yes. It's a fuck no, you know, like, so Jupiter and Aries is like, I'm expanding into these new timelines that are a full body, like, fuck yes, you know, like, and this is about grounding in, right? Aries is that birthing energy. It's consciousness being born conscious, you know, it's that animating life force energy, life force energy manifesting, and it's just going for it, right? It's like Aries is a single point of focus of energy going in new directions, right? Carving new paths forward is that trailblazing energy. So now more than ever going into 2023, we can expand into new timelines that are beyond what we would have previously thought. Now, it may not actually feel like we're kind of full force moving into it. You know, that may be more around the uh, spring equinox I'm, I'm sensing into. So we don't need to push things right now. Like Mars is retrograde. Mercury is about to go retrograde. We don't actually have to full, we don't have to, this is the thing we're learning. We don't have to push things, right? We can just be, we can trust in the divine timing. That's like a Pisces, Jupiter, Neptune, Pisces thing. And that timing is going to be right, right? We're going to receive that. We're actually Venus. We're receiving the timeline, right? We're, we don't have, we don't have to go force it. We're receiving the higher timeline. And then we can then take that aligned action, right? So right now we're receiving the higher timeline, but this is a time to vision big, right? Dream big, dream into that possibility, feel into that possibility, feel it kind of coming into your body, coming into your heart here. And this is a time to say yes to life, like to say yes to going for what lights you up with passion, purpose, inspiration. Aries is like, I don't have to have it all figured out. I don't have to have the plan. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to learn it along the way. I'm going to fail along the way. And I'm going to learn for that, learn from that. And that's part of the process. Now it's fascinating because sun and Capricorn squaring Jupiter and Aries, there's, there's friction there, right? Because Capricorn wants to kind of have the plan, right? Capricorn wants to have the plan. Capricorn wants to typically do things more traditional, right? What is known? What's worked in the past? Let's let let's stay in that realm. And then Aries is just this. I'm not thinking about it. This feels good. I'm inspired. I'm just going for it. So there's this interesting merging of the energy, right? And we're there's a push pull. So what we're learning with this Capricorn season, I'm sensing is we're receiving insight on how to go for these higher visions, there's higher dreams, right? With, and with the Capricorn sun with the solstice is bringing the pragmatic aspect, right? The practical, the pragmatic. Okay. Cause we, you know, here are the details, right? Like it, it, it's in Capricorn ground. So there's something really powerful and squares motivate us to take new action, right? To do things in a new way. So there's this merging of this Capricorn, like uh, pragmatism. And then this Aries, like just go for it kind of energy. And we're learning, I think part of this is with Venus in this Capricorn cycle. Let's just be, right? let's not push things, right? Because the Jupiter and Aries might just want to, we might want to just run with it before the time's right. We don't have to push it. We can just be, and we can receive, and then we can take grounded, inspired, um, action when the time is right. So, and Mars is going to still be in that post retrograde shadow, you know, through March. So I really feel like, we might be more in a, a visioning planning kind of, you know, slower movement kind of energy. And then come March, we're, we might be ready to like, you know, hit the ground running on a new level. But we, I think a big thing is right now we're learning to reorient. How can we, uh, how, how, what is sustainable for our energy? These old ways of over pushing, overdoing, over exerting, we're releasing that. And we're learning this new way of being this new way of creating. Um, and Venus is also trying Uranus with the solstice. So again, this is powerful heart awakening, powerful heart opening. These are an earth signs. 
There's um, this is the genius of our bodies being activated, right? This is about, I mean, this is really powerful, right? The genius is within our bodies. Um, we're, we're activating more of our cosmic intelligence within our DNA and how to actually like, uh, you know, I mean, this is powerful. We're, we're, we're the, um, our ability to create from within through the wisdom of our bodies is like being turned on like never before. And that was part of like that Uranus North no conjunction that we had, um, in, uh, and like June, no, July, August of last year or 2022, not last year, the time I'm filming, this is still 2022, but, um, oh, I just had a thought. <laughs> I just had a thought and I felt like I lost it. <laughs> I can't remember. So that's okay. Um, so, you know, with this, this, this Capricorn solstice, I feel like the new moon, I feel like the new moon is just rippling off of that Capricorn solstice. A lot of these themes I feel are really applicable for, uh, for both here. And, um, oh, actually what I wanted to say was with that Jupiter Neptune conjunction, Jupiter going into Aries, this is when it's like, we really start to birth through what was some of that inspiration, that higher vision, that higher dream that we tapped into while Jupiter was in Pisces, you know, um, for, quite a bit of 2022. Um, and so it's this really, this really, really powerful energy. And Mars is sextile Chiron retrograde at the moment of the solstice. So I believe they're both at 11 degrees. Let me just kind of check in here. Yeah, they are both at 11 degrees, both in retrograde. So again, we're, we're healing our relationship to the distorted masculine that's maybe been living within us. And we're, we're learning a new way to take action off of our healing medicine in a more grounded way. That's actually something that's coming in as well. The Capricorn new moon. Oh, and also Hygieia, the goddess Hygieia is with the sun. So lots of healing energy, like very powerful healing energy with the solstice and Hygieia will be with the sun, with the new moon, the sun and the moon. The new moon is on December 23rd. Sun, moon are meeting at 20 or sun and moon are meeting at one degrees of Capricorn and the goddess Hygieia is there. So a lot, there is so much healing energy with the solstice and with, you know, Hygieia and Capricorn. This is the healing that comes from the earth. There's ancestral healing. So maybe healing some of our, uh, some of these karmic patterns within our lineage as well. Um, there's, this is the healing of the earth, the healing that comes from the grandmothers, the wise elders, the, the trees, right? The soil, the roots, um, there's really powerful healing available with this uh, Capricorn new moon. And again, I think we're healing our relationship to the Capricorn energy and we're learning how to heal our relationship where maybe some of the distortions have been living within us. Where have the dominator culture been living within us that's been pushing us to to, to, to overexert our energy. We're healing that and we're learning how to create from this place of being. And all the new moons between this uh, Capricorn solstice and the Aries equinox, they're all at one degree. So lots of new energy coming in here. And a lot of the other aspects that I just spoke about are, you know, this new moon is also going to square Jupiter. So again, it's like we're expanding into new timelines. We're learning to do things in a new way and then expanding into new timelines. And we're also expanding with this Capricorn solstice and new moon square Jupiter. We're, we're expanding past our old identities, right? That are just not aligning with us anymore. Aries being very much about identity, right? We're expanding around these old identities. And we're, 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 I feel like we're learning how to connect more, right? This is part of this Venus cycle, right? More of our authentic heart essence. So these old self-limiting identities that we've had, we're expanding past them, right? And now we're learning how to create the structures and foundations of our life. This is Capricorn from a, from our heart, right? From our heart intelligence, from our higher self aligned with higher timelines here. And then we have, what's really powerful is we have the new Venus portal. Let me pull that up. Venus. So this is where the moon and Venus are conjunct. December 24th at 4 16 a.m. Pacific, we have the new Venus portal and actually the new moon. Let me just get the timing for that. The new moon is December 23rd at 2 16 a.m. Pacific. And then the new Venus portal is December 24th at 6 15 or no, 4 15. 4 16 a.m. Pacific. Um, oops, just pulling this up here. So with the new Venus portal, the moon and Venus are meeting at 
17 degrees of Capricorn. So this is very close to the point where Venus met the sun and Capricorn, where she started the cycle that was 18 degrees of Capricorn and she'll go to 18 degrees that day. So this is like, this is really like the evening star cycle is where we start to embody right? We embody everything that we've been being reborn into this Venus cycle, like the morning star Venus, we're clearing out the conditioning, the distortions, the programming that has kept us um, disconnected from our authentic heart essence, right? Now we're, we're being reborn, we're, we're embodying, we're claiming, we're claiming the authority of our heart essence, right? Venus and Capricorn, we're claiming the authority of our heart essence. And so now this is so, so powerful, the fact that it's so close in degree to where Venus started her cycle, and they're trying Uranus. So this is like, we are learning to trust the wild genius of our bodies, right? when where 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 do we typically push past our body where our body's saying no right we're learning to honor our boundaries honor hold our energy field honor our boundaries honor our the sovereignty right of our energy field of our body we're learning to really claim the sovereignty of our being i i really feel and with this uh this is the you know root chakra venus moon gate so we're we're kind of rising up in that earth energy right we're we're, we're rising up in that earth energy. We're learning how to create, um, to create with a more authentic sense of security and safety within, right? Where maybe we've been attached to illusions, trying to create safety and security from without, um, and then just being kind of stuck in self-limiting ways of being, keeping ourselves small. We're learning to create this from within. So we're not so attached to these things externally. So we can really have the freedom right to live our wildest you know our wildest most magical lives and venus is uh and moon are trying uranus so there's this powerful activation of our body wisdom our heart wisdom the wild genius of our bodies i mean there's just this really really powerful energy evening star venus where we're rising up in more of our heart medicine our authentic essence and what is it like to create our lives and live our lives from this new way of being where we're more free right we're freer because we're living in our hearts and so there's this really really beautiful energy and then december 29th um mercury is going to go retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn and he's in Mercury's conjunct Venus. So, and they're also conjunct Pluto at 27 degrees of Capricorn. So this Mercury retrograde is very fascinating because it very closely traces where Venus went retrograde at the end of 2021 and 2022, not fully by degree, but it's very close. So I feel like this Mercury retrograde is building off of the themes of this Venus retrograde cycle uh, about letting wherever that dominator culture has been living within us letting that die and being reborn into more of our authentic heart essence. And then this Mercury retrograde is like healing those thoughts, transforming those thoughts that are still running off of that like dominator culture paradigm about maybe doing and achieving and, you know, those kinds of things. We're like learning to heal those, transform where has the dominator culture maybe been living within our own thinking patterns as well from an unconscious way. And with Mercury going retrograde conjunct Venus, now, Venus will keep going forward, but Mercury will be going retrograde. You know, Venus is the beauty way, right? She's our receptivity, our magnetism, our heart essence, right? So we're, we're, I think we're learning to clear out because Mercury, every time a planet goes retrograde, we're clearing out energy blockages related to that planet. So Mercury retrograde, we're clearing out mental blocks, right? Mars retrograde right now, we're clearing out energy blockages around like how we're taking energy distortions around how we're exerting our energy mercury retrograde we're clearing out mental blocks we're alchemizing unconscious unsupportive thought patterns and aligning with ones that are more in alignment with our higher self right so we're learning to clear out uh anything that's been blocking us from creating more beauty in this world right speaking more beauty into this world being more beauty in this world breathing more beauty into this world creating more beauty so we can create more beauty in this world, speak more beauty in this world, breathe more beauty into this world, just through a way of being. It's a really powerful energy. This Mercury retrograde is going to be really powerful to transform some of those. I think, again, it's like those, where, where have those dominator culture themes been living within us where we've been over pushing, over exerting. It's like, is our action really even, you know, uh, and I say action because Capricorn is somewhat of an action oriented sign. Are these things aligned? And I think it may be a, 
it goes with that Mars retrograde too, right? Um, are they even aligned with our values when we can really pause and make sure our, you know, our thoughts and our action are aligned with our values? Because a lot of times we may be caught up in these unconscious patterns, right? The mind control that we are, so many of us are breaking the spell, you know, we are breaking the spell for the mind control. We are claiming more of our sovereignty, right? We're liberating ourselves or claiming more freedom and we are creating this new earth. So these are all really powerful things. I've kind of just been going on and on here. Um, I was almost a solstice time for, for me as I'm filming this. So I want to tune out here and really tune into the present moment and be in a ceremonial space. Um, and I love you so much. I'm wishing you so many blessings. And as always, I love to sit in one-on-one -on -one session through astrology readings. There's such sacred space and it's so special to be in the sacred space. So if you're interested in how are these energies, you know, playing out in your own astrology chart, I would love to sit in sacred session with you. I have a link in the description and I love you so much and many blessings as we expand into these new timelines, sharing our gifts and sharing our sacred medicine and being of service to the collective.